Well, James Brown, um, you know, what to me, well, I was, a, you know, I, I sort of put it in the past, but I mean, I am a big fan of James Brown and I still listen to James Brown, even though I've spent about 18 months on it. Um, I mean, I was a huge fan when I first, well, first of all, we had the, this record of the James Brown Live at the Apollo. That was the, I mean, I'd heard other things first, but that was the one that sort of, kicked it off and everybody had that. It was a huge number one record in America, but it was very popular uh, in England and you know, all, me and all my friends, we played it to death. And so, and that, so I knew what I'm coming to is, but, but you knew the stage show, that was the stage show. You know what I'm saying? So, so you knew the stage show. So when I went to see him first in 1964, he was basically still doing that show, but you knew it already so well. And it was amazing to see, because you'd imagined it in your mind, how it was going to be. And there it was. And it was just um, great. And so I, you know, I had never seen him on stage. And you know, he was an electrifying stage performer. And I, and I worked with Little Richard, which, which is obviously part of this story, which I didn't really know at the time. So, because Little Richard come from the same place. And I'd worked with Little Richard. I'd done a long tour with Little Richard. And Little Richard had taught me an incredible amount of things. And um, he was very generous uh, with his, you know, comments and notes and, you know, what you have to do with an audience and everything. And, and, um, and he was like James Brown. They were both similar in the fact that they, that they really communicated with an audience. A lot of people we, in this time, you know, they didn't really know how to communicate with audiences. He was a kind of, like, good guy to be thinking, well, this is a good sort of role model for your, for your stage performing. I don't just mean in the moves, but... Yeah, other moves are great, but but the energy levels and the and the way that he did the dynamics, you know, uh, of the show. Cause it's not all up, you know. You, what you see little clips, it's all him going nuts. But it it, it wasn't really like that. It was a lot of dynamics, slow numbers, slow ballads, slow it down, get them, get you know the audience going crazy, even doing a slow number. Then you know he was kind of an inspiration to me when I saw him first. <laughs> Tu peux voir sur la scène, il y a une scène, deux scènes avec Little Richard dans le, dans le film. Alors, parce que Little Richard pour James Brown, c'est la même chose parce qu'il a inspiré James Brown dans beaucoup de choses pour la performance et aussi dans le business. Et dans le film, il y a une scène qui il dit à James Brown exactement à faire, d'enregistrer le premier disque pour, de, pour euh, le disque, euh, send the record to all these different people. So, that's what he did. So Little Richard is very involved in the story. Alors, moi, je ne connais pas à ce moment. 64, je ne connais pas. Mais je connais les deux. Je connais les deux, mais je ne sais pas qu'ils ont ils ont une amitié avant. Je ne connais pas. I'm ready. You know what I mean? When is it going to be when we up there? We'll be back in team to play again. Ooh, yeah. Right now. Alors, la première fois que j'ai fait connaissance de James Brown, 64, euh, à la théâtre euh, Apollo à Harlem, c'est la première fois que j'ai vu James Brown, alors j'ai dit ça avant. Alors, moi, je suis dans le balcon, mais c'est l'après-midi, parce que les choses ça, se passe tout, le, tout, toute la journée. Ce n'est pas un show, ce n'est pas deux shows non plus. C'est quatre shows peut-être. Il dit six shows, mais je ne crois pas. Il, il dit six shows, mais je crois que c'est cinq shows peut-être. Le, le samedi. Alors, le 3 heures de l'après-midi, ce n'est pas plein. Alors, on peut entrer, je suis dans le bel grand, il y a un... Euh, il y a, mais le show, c'est assez léger, ce n'est pas le, le show de soir, c'est le show très relax. Et c'est la première fois que j'ai vu James Brown. Après, euh, j'ai visité dans le dressing room, alors il est très gentil avec moi, je, je sais pas, il connaît absolument rien de moi. Moi, je suis, j'ai 20 ans, je crois. J'ai 20 ans, je n'ai pas connu vraiment. Je connais en Angleterre, mais à New York, oui, un peu, mais c'est tout. Et, euh, et mais gentil avec moi, j'ai expliqué que je suis avec un groupe, et on fait les soul music, on fait les rhythm and blues, on fait les blues et tout ça. Il est très poli avec moi. Alors, voilà. 
alors, six, enfin, six mois après, six mois après, nous étions à Los Angeles, j'ai fait cette show qui s'appelle le Tammy Show, c'est un grand show de, de beaucoup de monde, le, le Beach Boys, le Supreme, c'est tout le mélange de musique, et avec beaucoup d'artistes. Et James Brown, il est très fâché parce que c'est le Rolling, Sto Rolling Stones qui va le top of the bill, qui va finir. Il est, oui, il est quoi le, le, Tête d'affiche. Tête d'affiche, très bon. Très bon, tête d'affiche. Et voilà, parce que nous sommes à ce moment, soudainement, les Rolling Stones sont énormément euh, 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 populaires. Popularité très, très grande. Alors, mais James Brown, il est très populaire, mais c'est euh, parmi, parmi, euh, parmi les Noirs, et très populaire, et les, et les Blancs qui connaissent, le, mais pas dans le mainstream, c'est pas vraiment. Mais il est connu, très connu, quand même. Euh, mais il est très fâché. Alors, le producteur du, du, du film, il dit, oh, « tu, Toi, tu connais le James Brown, tu peux pas parler avec lui, <rire> va le calmer, va le calmer. » Je dis, « Alors, j'ai 20 ans, je dis, oh, oui, bien sûr, pas de problème. <rire> » mais, mais ridicule, vraiment. Mais, euh, mais j'ai 20 ans, je peux faire, quand tu as 20 ans, tu peux faire n'importe quoi. <musique> Oh, J'ai vu plusieurs fois après, euh, dans les, les endroits là, comme Cleveland, je me souviens, dans les choses. Quand on, on, on traverse un peu, on, on, mais je l'ai vu, le, les années 80, j'ai vu, I saw him with, um, with the Blues Brothers and things like that. Uh, you know, he was always really nice. And, um, and, you know, he didn't like, you know, he liked to be, he, he liked to be, you know, the top of the tree, he didn't like it when he wasn't like the most hottest thing happening, you know. But he had this thing that was really special because he was so respected um, by all these kind of up and coming in the early days of hip hop. So he, he, that was a big thing, you know. And, you know, he was respected by like Michael Jackson and, uh, and Prince and all these people that were, you know, coming in the 80s. And, and, and then in the 90s, it was even more like, sampled and stuff. So his influence is really extended, you know, uh, though his songs and all that were not, his new songs and everything were not really, he wasn't doing that much. And then even now, you know, I mean, people like Jay-Z, all these people still like revere him and everything. I mean, African Bambata was the first guy that sampled. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of stuff for this guy, but he's like, You got to remember, this is a not educated person, you know. He's like, I mean, he can express himself. It's not, he's not educated. He can't like make, you know, he's not able to, to analyze, you know, like with, with a, with a lot of depth of knowledge of literature or theater or film or, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, to or, or abstract concepts. So, but he's had to teach himself all this stuff. Well, I made a documentary. I produced a documentary, but that was uh, that was that was what I was asked to do originally. That's how the whole thing started for me. Anyway. Well, yeah, I can, but yeah, I mean, of course, I wouldn't. I do it now, of course, but I might say now, you go and do it first. I'll do it if you can't do it. You know, <laughs> it's not really my job. <laughs> you know, yeah. Of course. <laughs> 